This is how to read Jin Ping Mei Chapter 40, Embroidered Portrait Book. Ping Er holds the child in her arms, and the maid Jin Lian loves her. 1. Grassroots Research on Pregnancy and Childbirth the reason why pregnancy and childbirth is in quotation marks here is that it is not pregnancy and childbirth in our ordinary sense. But Wu Yun Yang borrowed the firstborn fetal cells and talisman medicine through the power of a nun so that she could successfully conceive and give birth to a child. Now let's do a complete study of this process. Last night, at the fourth watch, that is, at two or three in the middle of the night, Wu Yun Yang still refused to sleep. The reason was that she was too interested in the story of the reincarnation of a member of the army, told by And Wang. These monks, nuns, and feng shui masters who visited the house were like fortune tellers, well trained in observing words and expressions. Mrs. Wang saw through Wu Yun Yang's intention at a glance, so she asked carefully, How come you, old man, haven't seen anything happy? So Wu Yun Yang recalled the tragic experience of her last miscarriage, Mrs. Wang expressed her sympathy, but she was still a little worried, fearing that Wu Yunyang's IQ would not understand the benefits of having a child. Look at Liu Nying in front of me. She gave birth to a son not long after she entered the house. How wonderful! Wu Yunyang expressed a helpless and resigned mood. Just let it be. This is what Aunt Wang is looking forward to. No, you don't have to accept your fate. I have a way. She began to sell the secret recipe of Buddhism to Wu Yunyang, but she could not say that she had it. That would seem to direct. She had to introduce another expert, which would look more mysterious. Every time I go with Master Zhu, I have a piece of good fortune-telling medicine. I use the clothes of the firstborn child, wash them with wine, burn them to ashes, and accompany them with the fortune-telling medicine. On the day of frenzy, people don't know. Ghosts unexpectedly conction ate it with rice wine. It is expected that the life will be good, and I will have fetal cramps in one month. From the perspective of modern readers, this is of course nonsense, but most fools believe it, so we might as well explain it. This is actually a word game. It requires that the time for sexual intercourse must be ranged on Renzi Day, which is homophonic for pregnancy. This statement had a wide influence in ancient times. The first child is the placenta of the firstborn boy. The homophone of the first child is reincarnation, which means pregnancy and childbirth. The last time the last member was reincarnated is the representative of this statement. Chapter 28 of A Dream of Red Mansions mentions the firstborn Zihech. Zihech is the placenta, which is the same thing as the firstborn baby. Ridiculous indeed. However, as mentioned before, when reading novels, one must respect the rules of the game set by the author in the story. Although the author despises these nuns who cheat money, a poem commented in this chapter, if all this generation became Buddhists, the West would still be dark. Chapter 50 When An Tzu arrived with the talisman medicine, she said, I can't sell a load of needles in 10 days, but I can't sell them for three loads of armor in a day. However, Wu Yun Yang was indeed pregnant because of the firstborn baby and Pan because Jinlian missed the Renzi day. She did not succeed in getting pregnant, and Pan Jinlian proved her fertility through Chen. Jingji's pregnancy, therefore, we treat the firstborn child and the talisman as efficacious and use this as a background to analyze the characters. When Wu Yunyang heard this secret recipe, she must have felt ecstatic in her heart. But she remained calm at all and just said lightly, invite him to come for a walk tomorrow. But don't tell anyone. He refers to Anzu. Who does person refer to? And surprisingly, it almost certainly refers to Meng Yulu and Pan Jinlian. This is obviously a good thing, allowing the Zimon family to flourish and make a fortune. So, why hide it from them? Obviously, the primary purpose of a child is to use it as a weapon to fight for favor. Since it is a weapon, how can it be easily taught to others? From this we can see how false it was that when incense was burned on a moonlit night before. Among the six people including my concubine, the air will be seen soon as so false. In fact, nuns, such as Wang and Ansu are a female helpers in cassocks who play with rich ladies. When they have nothing to do, tell stories about Buddhist scriptures and cheat them to eat and drink. It is indeed not easy to make these secret recipes. Talisman medicine can just find a yellow paper ghost to draw a talisman. But what to do with the newborn baby? Then it can be a real thing. Aunt Wang was not stupid. 
so she suggested that Brother Guan's brothers should be ran out to serve. Brother Guan was born a long time ago, and there were no refrigerators in ancient times, so he would probably have to dig a hole and bury it, if running means planing. This idea is also quite scary, but Wu Yunyang doesn't care about this yet. What she thinks about is, why harm others to your own safety? I gave you money, and you slowly found another way for me. The interesting thing here is why using Yiki will harm others, and why is Wu Yunyang unwilling to harm Brother Guan? Because the ancients were superstitious and believed that if the clothes cells were eaten by others, or used for other purposes, it would have extremely bad effects on the children, so they could only eat them themselves or bury them secretly. The key reason why Wu Yunyang is unwilling to harm Guanj is because she is the legitimate mother. As Mrs. Wang said, 10 stars cannot be the moon. It is good to have a legitimate son. But if there is no legitimate son in 10,000 misfortunes, then keep the legitimate mothers. It's better to treat the official brother as one's own. Obviously, the so-called Lu Yu's kindness is nothing more than Chen Qiu's writing style. Even if Wu Yunyang has a benevolent thought, it is just out of self-interest too. Leaping her as popularity, after sleeping all night, it was already the 10th day of the first lunar month. Pan Jinlian's birthday had been completely missed. Did Simon King still have her in his heart? This is really not a little girl's temper. The author will quickly tell you how deep the pain in her heart is. In the morning, Simon King went home with a hangover, and Wu Yunyang once again helped readers stir up trouble. Yesterday, my sixth sister was waiting for you to celebrate your birthday. Why didn't you come? It was she who wanted to send her name for the wedding ceremony, and it was she who wanted to go home to celebrate her birthday. Of course, you don't have to do it all day long, so why not come back early? Still subjective and indifferent. The Simon King of today is no longer the Simon King of the past who hung around the door of the tea house all day long for his lover, Simon King, who was a little tired, went directly back to the study to catch up on his sleep. Pan Jinlian and Li Pinger went from the garden to Wu Yunyang's upper room to say hello. Wu Yunyang who was not afraid of having too many things to do and was not afraid of causing trouble, immediately came up with a magical idea. Let the official brother put on the little Taoist priest's new clothes and take them to Simon King to admire, the night before yesterday, in order to try on the clothes. She did not hesitate to put her sleeping the baby wakes up in order to try on clothes again. He does not hesitate to wake up his sleeping husband. Regarding this matter, before Li Pinger could answer, Pan Jinlian rushed to say, I'll go to wait for me to dress the Taoist priest. Of course Pan Jinlian knew what Brother Gua meant to Li Pinger and Simon King, and also knew how much favor this behavior would bring to her rival Li Pinger. However, as a woman's nature, on the one hand, she likes excitement and beautiful things. On the one hand, she actually also likes children, even though this is Li Pinger's child. Pan Jinlian wanted to hug the child so much, and wanted to experience what it would be like to hold the child to find her husband. But Wu Yunyang stopped her because the child's feces and urine would stain her skirt. In the end, it was Li Pinger who hugged Brother Guan and called her. Wake up to Simon King in his hometown. Simon King was not angry at all after being woken up. He was very happy to see the little Taoist priest hugging and kissing him. Pan Jinlian took the opportunity to ask. Yesterday, I sent the oxen to plow the fields. Is he so sleepy today? Are you sleepy in the middle of the day? Yesterday, you asked Wu Ma to just wait for you. How dare you not come in cowed out to Wu Ma? There is a modern saying that goes, there are only exhausted cows and no damaged land. I think it means the same thing as Pan Jinlian. Pan Jinlian is very smart in these little things. She wanted to be angry with Simon King. But she deliberately joked with him in a naughty and coquettish way. Finally, she took advantage of the situation and made an appointment. Wang Xi, come home early. I'll wait for you. You give me another birthday. Now comes the question. It was Wu Yunyang who asked the child to try on clothes. Wu Yunyang who wanted to hold the child to Simon King to see. And Pan Jinlian who spoke after the child was carried. Leaping or didn't say a word from beginning to end. What's going on with this title? Cuddle the child Pinger in the hope of pampering is an active voice. According to the description of the story, Li Pinger was just pushed to do it as she pleased. How to understand desire to pamper? 
it is rare for the two versions to have exactly the same title in Jinping Mei. Although the plot of the firstborn child is very important, the title is not written this time as by the talisman and medicine for the moon, to ask for a child, and make up the maid Jinlian. City love is obviously to highlight the tit for tat confrontation between Pan and Lee, who are competing for favor. Indeed, Li Pinger in the story is not proactive, but Li Pinger's own love is not proactive either. Beauty, wealth, official brother, and happiness all fall on her for no reason at all. It was her inadvertent superiority that prevented Pan Jinlian from even celebrating her birthday, and made Wu Yunyang feel a deep sense of crisis. So they helped her take the initiative and pushed her to the forefront again and again, becoming everyone's the target of jealousy. 3. Pan Jinlian's Performance Pan Jinlian's makeup as a maid is the highlight of this episode. There is only one protagonist in this drama, Pan Jinlian, and the others have successfully become her supporting roles while laughing. There is only one audience in this drama, Simon Kang. No matter who else, no matter how happy they are, they're just a group of onlookers who don't know the truth. Perhaps it wasn't until the mystery was revealed that we realized that everyone had been taken advantage of by Pan Jinlian. Pan Jinlian worked hard to dress up the maid. I took off my bun, made a bun, made my face snow white, and painted my lips bright red. I wore a gold lantern pendants with three flowers on them and a gold hoop with a purple pen. I found a red woven gold suit with an emerald blue satin skirt. At first glance, it doesn't look pretty. The contrast between white and bright red is completely like an actor's. However, after a few more glances, I suddenly felt that it looked familiar. It turned out that the book boy had just dressed like this a few times before. The book boy is like this. In front of me is a fairy, a pair of gold inlaid fake green stone pendants, a bright red silk shirt, a green heavy silk skirt, and a purple gold hoop. I ordered some powder and applied it in the study and I looked like a woman. The dress is very charming. At that time, Pan Jinlian came back from an outing and was extremely angry because Dan took away the lantern. She was jealous of Lee Pinger and hated the book boy deeply. However, it is undeniable that although she despised the enemy strategically, she still paid attention to the enemy tactically. Maybe she got inspiration from the gorgeous female makeup of the book boy. Even if the girl's green heavy silk skirt is not available for a while, she can temporarily replace it with her blue satin skirt. Or perhaps, this image reminds us of Song Huilian, who has passed away long ago. On that most glorious lantern festival night, she looked like this. Green flash red satin blouse, white threaded skirt. He put a red gold sweat scarf on his head, flying gold flowers on his forehead, gold lanterns and earrings. He came out and followed the crowd. Bei Mei under the moonlight. She looks like a fairy all dressed in white silk coats, her head covered with pearls and emeralds, her face pink and red. That was the most dazzling moment in Song William's life. So we can understand that what Yuxia lent to the book boy was also her best decoration, and Pan Jinlian's dress this time was also her careful creativity after observing the details of course, even more so in the elaborate creativity of the author of Jin Ping Mei, when the goal is finally achieved. We can clearly translate it into vernacular, Simon King. Don't you even care about your wife's birthday and only focus on praying for your son's safety and wealth? Don't you like to seduce your maid and your wife occasionally? Look, I won't be your wife today. I will be the most beautiful girl today. After dressing up, it's time to perform. Regarding this girl who was declared to be the most beautiful newly bought, everyone had different reactions and was very excited. Li Pinger was the first to know about it. And the author doesn't need to see her reaction, because at the peak of her love, she doesn't care if there is another girl. Of course, she is willing to cooperate with Pan Jinlian's prank. Maybe to please Pan Jinlian. Maybe because in order to avenge her depression when she first came here, left them. They were the group of wives, daughters-in-law and girls who pointed at her gorgeous head and face and mocked her deceased. Husband, Wu Yunyang was the first to react when she heard that she had bought a new girl. Firstly, because she was the head wife, she could express her reaction directly, while others were the opposite. Secondly, she only cared about the status of the head wife and was not worried about buying the girl. But it was such a big deal like buying a girl that I didn't tell her in advance. When Li Pinger led the new girl in, 
Meng Yulu and Li Jiar were so panicked that they all came out to take a look. It was evident that they panicked first and then came out to take a look. When Ko Doing, Pan Jinlian couldn't bear the burden. After laughing, everyone expressed their stance again. Wu Yun Yang, Li Jiar, Miss Yang, etc. were almost deceived. But the cautious Meng Yulu still did not believe it. Perhaps readers will regret at this time. Why Pan Jinlian can't be more patient? How boring it would be if he laughed and ruined the whole trick. Or he may imagine how much new fun it would be if all the fake tricks were really done. If so, you have really been deceived by Pan Jinlian. You must know that there is only one audience for her pretending to be a maid. And everyone else is just a supporting role. The audience has not come yet. Can the supporting role enjoy the performance of the protagonist? Pan Jinlian deliberately showed a flaw and stopped the play before the climax, so that the supporting characters who were in full interest, but not yet satisfied took the initiative to help her continue the play. So, when Simon King finally returned, Meng Yulu immediately began to play her number one supporting actress. First, reduce the girl's age by five years, and then invite and call her again and again until she comes to La Pan Jinlian in person. At this time, we have questions about the Koi Pan Jinlian again. Doesn't she want to continue the show? Why does she deliberately invite her again and again? Until he was pulled to Simon King. Without saying a word or looking back, he quickly went to Wu Yun Yang's back room and replaced the bun. That symbolized his status as concubine. Why was this? Pan Jinlian said nothing. And this long planned drama came to an end. Maybe the extras didn't know what was going on. But the protagonist had already received 120,000 points of effect. Simon King opened his eyes and looked under the shadow of the lamp. But it was Pan Jinlian wearing a bun and pretending to be a girl, smiling with her eyes wide open. When Simon King saw Jin Lian dressed up as a girl, wearing heavy makeup under the lamp, he felt lustful and couldn't help but give him a look. Although there is a bit of ambiguity, we are almost certain that it was Simon King who smiled his eyes out because Pan Jinlian successfully achieved the desired effect, a lustful heart. In this way, we finally understand that Pan Jinlian made full use of Meng Yulu's voice. Since Meng Yulu has already called Pan Jinlian to come forward, it is impossible to give up without shame. The delay makes the fun more intense. And Pan Jinlian, she didn't want to obediently cow out like a real girl. Once she achieved her goal and won Simon King's knowing smile, she no longer had to pretend to be a girl and accept other people's teasing. The reason for quickly changing back into a bun is to tell them, don't think that I am really a girl. I am a majestic master. For Pan Jinlian's return, Pan Jinlian's painstaking performance finally bought back some of Simon King's heart and replenished her birthday wine from the day before yesterday. What is shocking is that in this rare opportunity to drink and have fun, Pan Jinlian only asked for some clothes for a banquet at Kiao's house the day after tomorrow. This will inevitably be despised by Taoists. And even a summary of the whole book along this line may eventually find that Pan Jinlian seems to be no different from Song Huilian and Wang Liuer. They always reach out to Simon King between the bedclothes. And this kind of behavior is more like a transaction than a kind of begging. And prostitutes are the most despised by upright people. But are these all the facts? Indeed, Pan Jinlian often asked Simon King for things between the sheets. However, we can see that since Li Pinger gave birth to her son, how many opportunities has Pan Jinlian had to see Simon King alone? If it were not for this opportunity, how could it be guaranteed? On the other hand, is Pan Jinlian short of money? If there was no shortage, she would not have been sold around after losing her father in childhood. She was much poorer than the wealthy Li Pinger and Meng Yulu and her understanding of money was much deeper than them. Couldn't Simon King give her more money at once? Of course, last time Simon King just gave Wang Liu a house worth a hundred tails of silver. But Pan Jinlian only asked for a few clothes, or even just a few clothes and a few pieces of jewelry. From this point of view, it is really despicable and pitiful. Because Wang Liu, who lives outside the courtyard wall, has a husband to stay with and has the hope of a good life. While Pan Jinlian, who lives within the courtyard wall, has no Quan has no money, no backing, and no children. He has nothing but his beautiful appearance and exquisite talent. She has long understood that Simon King is not hers alone. She can fight for every night and every night. 
but her hope is just to raise a child like Li Pinger. As for leaving a note for the future, maybe she had never thought about saving some money for the future, and possibly leaving Simon's family to find another way to make a living. In this way, we can understand that whether she is asking for clothes or jewelry other than asking her husband, where do you want her to get it? And she doesn't want to leave Simon's house. What's the use of asking for so much? Except for women the innate love for beauty and a touch of vanity can only explain the wife and concubines desire to live with their heads held high even if they lose their special favor. For this face that is just for self-comfort and self-balance. Just like those college students who have studied hard in the poor valleys and finally rushed to the city. They would rather cut back on food and buy clean clothes. Can't we give more tolerance and compassion? Alright, this part of the story ends here. Want to know what happened next? Let's listen to the breakdown next time.